are tuned in to Rip Radio Network, which can mean one and only thing. That this is Chip Chat. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Chip Chat, everybody. I'm Chip. With me is Tez. Yo, yo, what's poppin'? You're back. I am back, yeah. I, How was your assignment? Uh, you Did know. y'all win? <laughs> no. No. We didn't. And it was and freezing. And you had to sit in the rain. It was freezing cold. Like, the rain subsided like I, I planned I knew this game wasn't going to start at three o'clock at three o'clock <laughs> four four or five because right. I saw the forecast uh prior so I planned that out right I got to the the ballpark I went with the family it was just it, but it was like no it was too cold ate Had some hot dogs make it through the, through the no game? no we no, could, no. ate some hot dogs and went home okay but you were there I was there I was definitely at the yeah definitely your at the beloved game. expos my beloved expos yeah yeah, that's good. Sale again. The Walgreens. <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> I'm just bitter because the Orioles are terrible. We won a game. Yeah, I was going to say, you guys, didn't you? Did you guys? I know you won the we're, first one against Milwaukee. We, where we I didn't beat know the what, Brewers. We got a game in against the Brewers. And then last night it was, you know, doing okay, but ended up, no. Yeah, and I think the not, Nationals were down to Pittsburgh yeah, last night. Yeah, were, were, like were four or something like that. Yeah, and the Caps are getting blown out by the Leafs. Which I'm not going to acknowledge is happening. All I will say on that on this note here is that the Nationals did win a series against the defending world champions. So that's, that's true. A, that, hey. And this team, and I don't think this team is. I, I don't have huge expectations for this team at all. So Doolittle's no. back. That's good. I think that's bad. What, really? Okay. Well, <laughs> I think, we're talking, I'm, I, I, you're the first I, I person love, I've heard say that. I, no, as the fan, obviously I love that, but. That tells me if we have to bring him in for the bullpen, and maybe they know something I don't know, but like, I think they, are, I think he's good. Are, there's no one else out there in the major leagues that we've been he's, here before. Just because he's been here doesn't mean that you know the people return and do great they stuff. Do. I don't, I, I Hashi don't know. came back to the wings twice and won two cups. I mean, it's it's a thing, you know. I mean, so far I have no I have no I have uh, no I could have complaints, but it's way too early to have complaints. Nobody remembers that Dominic Hasek played for the Red Wings, even though he won two Stanley Cups with them. Everybody remembers him as a Buffalo Saber, which is hilarious. I love Doolittle. I have a bobblehead sits right. on my desk. Yeah, 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 yeah nice. cool. I just don't know. Like again, we could probably get him on the show. Not after I just he said our I don't, politics. I, he, yeah, well, yes, definitely. <laughs> but not after I just was like, nah, I don't nah do he'll forgive you. <laughs> he has to. Yeah, he's, he's one of the good ones. <laughs> I meant ball players. I, know, I don't know what players. you That's thought. What okay, um, so <laughs> welcome back. Thank you. Um, we have a That'd big be. show. We've got some uh, Ukraine updates. We got to no. got to go over that. Uh, so it's a mixed bag. I think it's fair to say with, mm-hmm. with all that. Um, my beloved, what the fucks? <laughs> you got to fill me in there. I've are been... are continuing to be the embarrassment that Jay Scott Smith predicted that they would be. He did. That he said guy it. is clairvoyant. Every time we have him on the show, he says something and it turns out to come mm-hmm. true. Which he said, is give us some weeks. How he won three Murrow Awards at once. Right, exactly. So he doesn't have to be good at the news. He already knows what's going to happen before. Maybe he's a Jedi. Mm. Have we checked his Metachlorian I was going to ask. I was going to ask. I've never, I've never tried. J. Scott Smith, possible Jedi. Don't know. We broke the news here first. We don't have any evidence he's not a Jedi. The Force is strong with him. We'll find out in May, on the fourth. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's All hilarious. right, that's a, okay. That's that's good a, Star Wars joke. Yeah, <laughs> um, kind of. Okay, we. It's not good. It was a Star Wars joke. <laughs> it was it's not star, good. Yeah. Uh, okay, we found out uh, more about the coup. That's terrible. Tan spam and his buddies. Uh, it's a lot of text were messages. Very upset. Yeah, I'm impressed. It's a lot I, of I text. Wouldn't, I mean, you know, cocaine will do that to you. <laughs> And if you're texting somebody who can't vote, I think the best thing to do is to um, text him about overthrowing things. Because we're going to talk about yeah, that. Yeah, that is true. That is, it's all kinds see, of stuff. This I is see a very foreshadowing exciting, here. Yeah, that's yeah I'm trying. I'm it's trying. Good. To, I'm learning. It's good. You know, it's literary. Not, not learning. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're doing our best. Yeah, there we go. What should I say? In seven and a half years, we still haven't figured out how to do radio. But mm. why start now? No one beats a failure but a trier. That's very true, but also <laughs> depressing. Yeah. Yes. Keep trying. We're all going to keep trying. Keep trying. What's the Daniel Tiger line, right? Keep oh. trying, you'll get better? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Poor Daniel Tiger. I'm a hopeless example. <laughs> keep trying. I don't get any better. Also, Dick Buckus uh, posted this thing today on Twitter. He's, He's been tweeting again. He is fantastic to follow on Twitter. Uh, of, like, the top uh, linebackers in history from ESPN. 
And he was at the top of the list, of course, which which makes sense, right? But somehow, like, number five on the list was LeVar Arrington. And I was like, if you tell anybody in Washington that he was a the top five linebackers of all time, we will throw lots of things at you. That is ridiculous. He was the biggest disappointment this side of Hainsworth. Like, no, LeVar. The, the top five? Yeah, I mean, come on. I wanted him to be. You of know, course, I had high yes. hopes. He's linebacker yeah. U. is all this stuff. Disaster. What do you come out of? Penn State? Penn State. Linebacker yeah. U. Not a linebacker. Yes. <laughs> That's what they call That's it. That's what they call it. Okay. Purdue's quarterback U. Is you know, me in the college. I, I was trying to. I was hoping that Penn State was the right. Was it's the, right, the college football. The college football, you know. <laughs> he doesn't follow the college football. <laughs> no, I only follow the college football, not college football. Um, <laughs> All right. You want <laughs> So you have a word? We, <laughs> yeah, we have torpedoed this, this show. Bad. We have Neptune good missile this show. Yeah, yeah. It's good. It's good. We're on time. We had a. We had a. Uh, we're gonna get out of at eleven. We're today. not DJing for ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Brian is not confident. <laughs> I am not confident. Just us two. <laughs> yeah. No, there's no three? chance. No chance. You don't know who's. Yeah, we have a guest tonight. <laughs> it's uh, nah, nah, nah. missing in action. Yeah. There nope. you go. Nope. <laughs> Way to go, Brian's. Brian's the guest. The soundboard is the guest. Exactly. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'll give the uh, the soundboard to Alex room. Jones. is is our third is our guest tonight. Actually, for real? Yeah, he's here with his In frogs. Songs? Oh, man, with the frogs. <laughs> yeah, so, he's, he's okay. Mad about them. <laughs> I'll eat Mitch McConnell. Like corn on the cob. There you go. <laughs> it's hey, it's so good. It just need a reason to get it in every right. time. Uh, you have a word? Yeah. Okay, I've got a word. <laughs> it's very topical. Okay. So we'll see if we get it. All right. So uh, sit back, grab some. The. It's Pesach time. You're listening to the best <laughs> show, the only show, Chit Chat on Rip Radio Network. The sweeps. <laughs> Chip Chat here on Rip Radio Network. I am your host, Chip. With me is Tez. What's up, yeah? All right. Uh, and also, as I mentioned, going into that break, uh, tomorrow night begins Pesach, Passover. Mm-hmm. It's uh, the holiday, of, one of the holidays of my people. Yes. Uh, this is in that category of somebody tried to kill us. We ended up okay. Let's eat. It's a, it's lots of eating. It's a big Seder. It's a dinner. I have to eat a tremendous amount of food and drink mandatory cups of wine i'm very Amen. upset about that yeah, i'm commanded it's like literally one of the 613 commandments sorry <laughs> hands tied it's hey, god's rules man i don't believe in the invisible guy in the sky except on passover look i mean i was reading something obviously and they were saying <laughs> and they were they were just explaining that i guess and it was from one of your tribesmen that having like I forgot the specific holiday that it was, but they were like having a barbecue was more in line what was happening years ago than like uh, going into like a synagogue or somewhere like 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 that like that he was making that comparison to it. Yeah, uh, Passover like using food again, like being out of that. that okay, point so of Jewish day. people basically use food to worship. This is right. how we do things. Okay, oh you're you somebody's died. Here's a kugel. Uh, you know, somebody's born, here's a kugel, it, something has happened, here's brisket. It's just what we do. We don't right. have other mechanisms. You know, we have guilt and food. Those are our two things. <laughs> so, yeah, this is what we're going to do. And, and Passover is celebrating our freedom, the exodus from Egypt, which may or may not have actually happened. We don't have a lot of historical evidence <laughs> look, look, of that. <laughs> oh, God, we're not going to talk not about Not super that relevant. Look, that's, that's not relevant. That's it teaches us to... Uh, Celebrate our freedom where we have it and to look out for people who don't. 
So this is why it's one of the holidays that I care very much about and I of hold course. on to. And I follow the central tenet of celebrating my freedom by restricting my diet. The eat matzah for eight days. No okay. grain, no beer, no whiskey. And so I bought some of those tequila-based seltzers to get me through the week. Tequila-based seltzers? Okay. Tequila yeah, is not a grain. It's a cactus. <laughs> so it's legal. That's so I drink tequila for a week. And thus, freedom. Yes, so. God commanded it. I can't argue with it. Exactly. To everyone who's. To get everybody celebrate, who yeah. celebrates. Yeah. yeah. Happy, Enjoy. Happy Passover. Happy Pesach in advance. So there, there you go. go. Enjoy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Don't these. cheers with the beer, though. No, no, definitely not. No, look, I did not. That's why I'm getting it in tonight. Oh, man. They got to get yeah, it in. Yeah, yeah. Lord, yeah exactly. No, no beer. These things are very important because, again, this is how us as humans can, masses of us are able to do things and cooperate. Yes. These, masses of us. Masses get. of us can cooperate, hopefully for the right things. Mm. No, yeah. I didn't say that. I just said cooperate. We're not saying. <laughs> I just not, said cooperate. Not taking a position on organized religion. Not at all. No. Okay. Speaking of uh, lack of positions, the Russians. The Russians uh, are shifting their position in Ukraine because they're getting their asses kicked. To the east. Yep, because they're losing. They basically abandoned. Oh, I like. We got a graphic. The Ukraine updates. (laughs) (laughs) No. Way to go, Brian. Go blue. If this... No! Yes. No! Oh my God. God. No! 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 He had it ready, ready to, to go. go. All right. Now that we've got all the funny stuff out the way. All right. Uh, um, all right. So Vladdy's uh, mission to to nowhere has in fact gone sideways on him. They left their positions around Kiev and the surrounding areas, and in so doing, left behind. Huge masses of dead people. It's not great. Um, yes, is the, it's very the, definitely genocide. As far yeah. as we know, by the Russians' own admission, they've carried off roughly 10,000 people to uh, Russia that they, they said they were offering them safety. Uh, they are actively talking about re-education camps on Russian television and about how they're going to have to basically teach these Ukrainians that they don't exist. Because that is that is their central tenet far here. Far from over, right? And mm. Trump, or I'm sorry, Putin. So how did I don't know? It was a Freudian <laughs> slip there. Uh, Putin told everybody that uh, his cause was noble, and he had a public appearance. He says, "Look, the war is going great. Not war. The special operation is yes, going be great. Be careful now, uh, and that they're winning, and they're successfully teaching the Ukrainians they don't exist, and everything is fine, uh, despite all of the dead Russian soldiers." that people are beginning to notice are not coming home. Interesting, but they're not talking about it. Um, the Russians are regrouping, right? They've claimed they're, they're sort of refocused. They said, okay, well, we're going to focus on the eastern section there of Ukraine where they've been basically fighting since 2014, say, the yes. Donbass so region, at, as they yeah. call it. Uh, this is the quote-unquote breakaway republics, as Putin called them, of uh, Luhansk and Donetsk, they're not breakaway republics. They're full of people who do speak Russian and are ethnically Russian. There's the same ethnicity yeah. who are who identify as Russian, but definitely don't want to be in Russia. They want to be in Ukraine, and they're fighting and have been since 2014. So they're they're shifting over there. Joey B was like, "Here's another 800 million dollars worth of stuff, including for the first time a bunch of helicopters, right. the the Mi 17s, the Heinz, you know, that we battled against in uh, the Cold War for all these years. He's given them a bunch of more stuff, Patriot missiles and all kinds of stuff. Uh, the Czechs are giving up some tanks and some Sams and some all kinds of stuff, and." But still, like, confoundingly in all of this, it seems like the NATO countries are deciding what weapons the Ukrainians get to have. The Ukrainians are like, we know exactly what we need. Here's our list. And they go, well, what you really need is. And they're like, no, no, we're the ones doing the fighting. We know exactly what we need. Here's our list. And they go, no. You'll take what we decide you can have. What won't be seen from Russia as... I forgot the specific word they like to use. Uh, Interference or whatever. Or whatever. I don't know. Whatever. What, what's it? I, this is, this is, there's a word that they always tend to use on it that it, I forgot what it, but basically that it, it escalates it to, I don't know, 
I forgot the exact. It doesn't that. matter. I mean, obviously, this is all just window dressing on the thing. I will say that this indirect war that NATO and Biden and the U.S. are fighting is working out pretty well. Like we finally have an ally that is defensively just in their cause, unlike say all of the other, you know, I don't know what you want to call them, anti-Soviet forces we've given weapons and money to for the last 50, 60 years. Excursions. Sure. <laughs> Mujahideen come to mind. Uh, but like we have, we have a, le- you know, legitimately just cause that we're fighting that they're fighting for, they seem to be fairly adept at using the stuff that we give them and that they've built themselves. And they've got this charismatic president and it, all of this, is, and they're winning. <laughs> it's, it's all working out pretty well, apart from all the dead people, which yeah, you which, predicted on yeah, our I show. Yeah, I was going to say this is going to, I mean, it's a war. I don't, it's, I'm not even. It's a fun war. It's a fun <laughs> war. We've had fun Lord. wars. These are fun mm-hmm. wars, right? It's a fun war. Yeah, it's a it, it's a war. Um, and I don't know. It just seems to me that this is going to still extend for a long, long period of time. I think so. Yeah. Um, I'm also interested to see Zelensky as a leader after this. I'm very. I don't know. I'm very interested just to see where that right because. Yeah, it's not like you can pick up your your country and move it somewhere else. It just stays there, right? Right. So I just don't like. And Russia's still right, right there. there. I don't like. So I'm very. Who, but also, also too, he has to govern and stuff. I mean, yeah. Churchill ended up getting no confidence out after yeah. winning the war. Yeah, you know, you like right, it's right. not like he retired. He literally lost an election. So yeah, I'm very interested to see where that goes afterwards. Like yeah, they. But it, also, you got to kind of live in the present, and yeah, folks. This is going to go on for a long time. Folks are going to continue to die. Uh, again, calling it genocide is, I mean, that is. He's right. Seems to it's be a genocide. Yeah, seems to be it is, it is actively a genocide. The Russians are, the, the Putin is very, I don't know why all of a sudden he's motivated to destroy the Ukrainian people as a people. Um, after saying that they were brothers and that he wanted to reunite the country. Scorched earth. It's basically what we're, what we're looking at. Uh, the Austrian that's what dictators do, right? Yeah, that's, that's right. That's, that's, that's their playbook. I don't know. That's nothing new. You know, whether it's the steps of the capital or the, you yeah. know, the outskirts of Mariupol. But the the Austrian prime minister went to go try to talk to Vladi. No, he tried. Yeah, he did try to go. He, it didn't go well. <laughs> he seemed like he walked out there like, eh, look, uh, hey, good folks, uh, it's going to get worse. <laughs> it's he got better. a meeting. He goes in there and he's like, hey, Vladi, what do you think? You know, you want to like, you know, get out of this and find a way to, you know, maybe we can give you a back door. And Putin was like, is potato. And so then he left and he, he came back and he goes, yeah, listen, it's not great. You know, guys like a crazy dictator and I'm Austrian. I ought to know. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of what happened. Speaking of which, irony of ironies, a number of. Holocaust survivors who, you know, they were kids during the Holocaust. They're in their 90s now, had to evacuate from Ukraine because of the war. And they, many of them ended up having to evacuate to Germany. Oh, what a great point. They were literally liberated from the camps by the Red Army, by the Soviet Russian Army, and spent the last 65 years, 70 years thinking of the Russians as liberators. And now they had to flee back of all places to Germany. And I think just even with that, and as we'll look at history or looking back on history, these things can change. Very Like all these things can like the balances of things, which might seem so certain for so long, it can change. And I think we're in, we're obviously in that. We're in that transition. I mean, when, when (laughs) Trump ended up as president and Merkel kind of like replaced him as the The leader of the free world. And even I was like, what do you think? How do you think about that? Right. I guess I got to trust Germany to kind of run things for the next little while. I am not super comfortable with that, you know, vis-a-vis what they did to my family, but they, these Germans don't seem like those Germans. Maybe things are a little bit better, and it's it's okay. And now we're at this point where, like, the situation in Ukraine has gotten so dire that the rest of the world has essentially taken their 
taking the lid off of, of both Germany and Japan. And they're like, look, if you guys want to start sending weapons and troops, and that's cool. We're you're, This whole like imposed post-war pacifism is over. Y'all have proved yourself worthy. You're on the good side. You know, you're in the community and nations and the G7 or whatever. You want it, you're in NATO. Yo, welcome. You, you, did, you did your penance. And that's huge after two world wars. It took it's, another it, genocide it, yeah. to, to lift Germany out of the, out of, take them out of timeout, out of the penalty box. I'm still not giving them that. No, of course. Why? I am why never going to like go to Germany. I'm never going to give them the credit for, you know, they did the, they're doing the right thing. Good. They owe us like for the next thousand years, but they're doing the right thing. Yeah. The yeah. Austrians too. They're trying. They're, they're yeah. part of the same cohort right they okay um biden said it was a genocide yeah of course i mean he's, he's right he's yeah he's gonna speak from because yeah we haven't even before that i, I wasn't on the show when he had when he uh he called putin a war criminal war criminal that and, was yeah, everybody was, lost their they their, lost everybody their, everybody their their minds <laughs> about that and and he you know look joey b is gonna say what joey b is thinking uh yeah, he's a moderate and he says he says stuff and is going to have gaffes, okay? I yeah. don't know why people are confused. There's nothing by those shocking. There's nothing surprising. It was okay. <laughs> he likes to drive a Corvette and eat ice cream. These are all, like, known things. And he's going to – he's he's awkward and he stutters. Okay, cool. He's also, like, competent. He's not doing anything crazy. It's <laughs> no. fine. No. Yeah, the people – everybody wants him to do something crazy. He is not about – he's not yeah, about crazy. Yeah, they're like, like, why don't you threaten more <laughs> stuff? He's like, are you crazy? No, we're not doing that. It's a nuclear conflict. We're not having a – no. They're like, don't you want to send troops or airplanes? No. No, I want to avoid – Good politics, too, blaming the gas on Putin. He's right, though. Good good, good politics. It's, it's legit. Like, we said on the other show as well, too. We said – well, we're a few shows back. We were like, you know – Yes, these, these things were going to go up no matter what. Eventually, no matter no, but at, no, no matter what. After you have after what, the COVID, after yeah, the, yeah, the spike in demand. There's no way in hell that it wasn't going to happen. Just what, dead. And the Russians were counting on that because they need that to fund their 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 what did, so, what are they calling it? Military operation, operation. special More operations. excursions. Um. Also, the big update here, and again, I want to heavily emphasize <laughs> that we are not making fun of lots of people dying. No. Because it that is like that tragic him, and awful. Not the, yeah. We do want to very heavily emphasize, however, the Keystone Cops aspect of this war. So you may remember the beginning, early stages of the war, there's this little tiny rocky island in the Black Sea called Snake Island. I'm sure it's called something in Ukrainian, but mm-hmm. we have translated it to Snake Island, and we're Americans, and we're not going to bother to learn the other people's words. Of course not. Because that's Snake what we got. That sounds like some of the streets of rage. Hey, I tell you what. Solid. When another country gets to the moon, then they can walk around not learning other people's stuff. Mm. That's the rules. <laughs> Go to the moon, you don't have to learn stuff. <laughs> You've already learned the most stuff. Freaking damn. Whatever. Damn Americans. Exceptionalism. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Do still do that So, anymore? yes, we do that. Yeah, I don't know. Trump, I thought he canceled that. It's a different kind. Oh. He means the other thing. So... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Snake Island is its this little tiny island. There was a small garrison of Ukrainian troops there. Yeah, these are, yeah. Uh, I think they were like Coast Guard or Border Guard or something. You know, they're not even like regular army. They're just there, you know, sort of make sure that the island is okay. Leave the Pelicans alone or whatever. All right, so this Russian warship, the, the Moskva, which is Moscow in Russian, sails up and points all the guns at these like 20 or so people and goes, Surrender. surrender the right. It is the you know, so surrender the island. The and they sort of talk it over amongst themselves, and they, they pick up their bullhorn, and they go, Russian warship. This is a direct quote. They go, Russian warship, go fuck yourself. To which the Russian warship, the Moskva, responded, boom, and killed basically <laughs> all of them. Except for, like, no, for some, a couple, a couple of, of the guy who yeah. said it survived yeah. and, like, two or three other people. He survived to tell the story. Yeah. So... And, and the footage of it, because somebody filmed it and put it on Telegram or whatever immediately. Okay, so, like, the Ukrainians did what anybody would do in the face of such a brave incident. They minted a stamp. That's what it, what any country would do, right? You'd print stamps to commemorate this, do. this thing. Yeah, so they printed these stamps of Snake Island with the actual words, Russian warship, go fuck yourself, in Ukrainian on the stamps, which is hilarious. 
Uh, and there we thought the story laid. But it didn't. In fact, the Moskva was sailing past the southern coast of Ukraine, presumably shooting at things in Ukraine. It's a missile yeah, and gunboat. Yeah, it's right. a you know, mostly its but, job is to be a floating artillery platform. And uh, the Ukrainians shot it with a missile that they built called the Neptune cruise missile, which they developed from an old Soviet missile, and blew it up, like damaged it right. pretty drastically, which the Russians even admitted. They're like, hey, the Moskva got blown up. We, they said it was an ammunition fire. Of course, it was well, it failure. was, yeah, but yeah. they just didn't say what started it. Yeah. <laughs> it was somebody else's ammunition. So then, like, all right, so it's damaged, and, like, this is a cheerful, happy story that we're all kind of, like, just desserts, whatever, and this is where it left this afternoon until on our way to the yes. studio tonight, news breaks across the wire that, in fact, as they were towing this ship to, I guess, be repaired or at least out of harm's way, it sank. It sank. It's at the bottom of the Black Sea right now. Who sunk my battleship? That's exactly right. A Neptune cruise missile. That's true. <laughs> they did the thing. You know, they parked it down there on J2 trying to like right, hide, it. hide it. Out. It's you never good. It out. You, you always know they're going to be in the corner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just take a shot. You know, work your angles. It's again, hilarious. Again, if there wasn't thousands dead, millions refugees out here, like, it would be like, oh, my God. This, what are you doing? The, Ru like, the Russians are conducting this war a little it? like the movie Battleship. It's that stupid. What's the who is the last who is the last person or the last like they've defeated? I'm just thinking of of this army. Not to say not as America hasn't really defeated because conventional. Know, war. They kind of won in Georgia, I guess. Yeah, they successfully yeah, yeah, yeah. like annexed, annexed a couple yeah. of regions, Abkhazia and South Ossetia. In case anybody cares. But, like, I mean, Ukraine has a full, I mean, not to say They're the like a real army. Yeah. Georgia's a little tiny was, country. They're they're not, I'm not trying to shit on the Georgians. No, no. But, but I'm just saying, like, against an army. I don't know one of meh. Well, they didn't win in Afghanistan. At all. No. <laughs> no I, I mean, they haven't, they haven't won anything, basically, since the, the war. And, and in that, they got a lot of help from us. Or they would say, we, I was we say, got a lot of help from them. I mean, it's books you're reading. No, it's, okay, yeah, okay <laughs> fine. But they didn't have the RAF and the 8th Air Force. So, like, that's yeah. we bombed the Germans into having no capacity. And the Russians overwhelmed them with millions of people that they were willing to <laughs> kill. Like, they, you know, if you don't value human life, it's easy to win wars. You just throw waves of people at them and say, I don't care. But they're try they tried that now, and they're, they've run out of people. They, they just don't have the waves of conscripts to throw at the Ukrainians. And the Ukrainians have grandmas. They yeah, weren't they counting on grandmas. That. They do have, yeah. Shoo. A whole state of folks that are just like, yeah, I'm here to fight. Also, the, the sort of, like, nihilistic attitude of the Eastern Europeans post-communism is very difficult to defeat. Because they're already dead inside. You know, the, <laughs> know the, Russians, yes. the Russians are like, we're coming yeah. to kill you. And you're like, yeah, okay. We're, we've we'll go down. We've it. been ready to die right. for, you know, been eating borscht our whole life. What are we supposed to do? <laughs> they're ready to die. They don't care. They have nothing to live for. They're, they're, they'll fight. They'll fight. What do they care? They're not afraid. That's the thing it's is they're not person. afraid. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the scary ones to fight. You just, Yeah. They're, they, they want it. They, they want it. Yeah. What else are they going to do? I tried my hand at being a graphic designer. It turns out sad isn't a motif. So, uh, yeah, give me a rifle. <laughs> That's, I mean, Christ. No. All right. What? I know a lot of people from over there. No, they're, they're all they like that. You know? they're all it's like just that. sort of like, did you watch the game? Sports mean nothing. Life is didn't sports. They just host, didn't Ukraine host the Euros a few? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they don't... But, Look, not, it wasn't for them. No, 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 no. It was for, you know, Netherlands and we Spain or whatever. Now that whole country has been destroyed. Seems to be so. They'll be fine when it's over in six years. I don't know. It's bad. Will this show, so here we go right now. Will this show still be Outlast on the, the war? Yeah. So far, we've been around seven and a half years. It's a long time. Long time. We've outlasted the other war. I'm saying. So on. We'll ask we Will you still be here? Yeah. yeah I'm stuck. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, your can't name's on the show. <laughs> yeah. But you, you know, 
you're almost coming up on your year. By I am almost coming up on my year. Congratulations. Thank or, you. Or sorry. I don't know what's no, the right I, thing to say. I can enjoy myself. Here's a, you know, before we transition out of here, because yeah. obviously this is, We're going to need to hit a break out yeah, here. We just totally wrecked the night. Yeah, no, but like just, just a random one here. How do you guys feel about the person who brings you the uh, shopping cart, like, from the grocery? Like, you're leaving the parking lot to go in? You're like, hey, do you want this? Is that, like... Hey, great citizen, just trying to help my neighbor out? Or is that just like laziness at the masquerade ball trying to just go ahead and just get you to take the, uh, the car? I make a point of returning my car Me, yes, to the that's, corral. Yeah, that's what I do. Because I think that people, A, like I often pick up a cart from the corral. Right. Because if it's on my way, then I don't have to get one near the front. And it saves the guy whose job it is to wrangle the carts from having to wrangle at least one more cart. So I think that that's the sort of agreed upon deal. But I've I've been handed a cart. I wonder, even though I don't think I, I know it, that COVID is spread that way. I thought I got, that's where I thought it died at. But then I see more folks are like, "Hey, do you want the cart?" I'm like, yeah, cool. I don't. I'm like, Thanks. nah, I'm okay, and I'll go get the cart. No, I take I I'm, I I'm I'm willing. So I guess it's laziness on the other end. It's, it's lazy on, on my end there too. Yeah, that's what it is. I don't have to walk all the way. No yeah, way. it's fine. I wanted the tall cart, but you give me the big cart. It's fine. It saves me from what? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's cart's cart. Cart's a cart. It does there the job. Go. I don't care. There you go. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you were doing with that cart. It's fine with me. Yeah. I mean, again, I'm not. I don't know what's about to hop off the cart handle. I mean, the like, cart's not. Are, way, that's not even. Yeah, for why? me, for me, it's more so. It's more so like no. Go put your cart back in the damn corral. I'll go get the cart from where. So that's more where I'm at with. I it. feel like the grocery cart is obviously the thing that people use as the sort of template to. Talk about citizenship, Mor morals, and citizenship. Yeah, That's yeah, why I yeah. Right. exactly. Yeah, everybody yeah. uses it that way, and and I'm willing to participate in the, by far the most expressly obvious version of socialism <laughs> okay. we experience in America, which is there's only a hundred carts at the giant, and there's thousands of people who shop there every day. We are sharing a resource equally yes. amongst ourselves. Yes, <laughs> absent any kind of requirements, rules. There's none of that, and everybody just naturally falls into this shared use of a resource. This is why I hate because this is I'm reading too much again, but this is why again we're the crazy like species of Homo sapiens because we do this with strangers. Yeah. It like all the time. Other animals don't do shit like that. They're, no. Need, they take a while. Like, before we start sharing a card, we got to get to know each other, figure out if you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck friend fuck or foe. Yeah, no, no, no. Fuck that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because we, that's why <laughs> we are here in the saber-toothed tiger's <laughs> arms. Exactly. Like, we got together. Like, shit, the saber-toothed tigers keep eating us. Maybe if we all work together, we can fight them <laughs> off. That's it. But like, that that's it. Is, that is, that's it right there. I'll eat Mitch McConnell. Right. <laughs> or a saber tooth tiger. Yeah. Or the woolly mammoth. They're not here. Ojeda would eat a tiger. Yeah. No question. Like corn on the cotton. No, he's from West Virginia. That they eat anything. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> raccoons and whatever else. Squirrels. No, I <laughs> I've had squirrel. It's good. I haven't had a squirrel, but I, I knew we used to like raccoons would get stuck on our roof. We had like a trap that we'd catch them. Yeah. And this guy would come and get them and I asked my dad one time, I was like, what do you do with them? Like, like makes sense. He eats them. Yeah, and it makes hats out of the Probably. pelt. Yeah. Somewhere in Virginia. You took There's them. enough Davy Crockett's out there. <laughs> they need a hat. What right. else are they going to do? <laughs> okay, now we do. All right, let's show. take a break before we get too far down that raccoon hole. Aha. <laughs> like that? That's oh, good. Lord. It's bad. I'm embarrassed. Okay. That's a bad one. We're going to take a break. You're listening to Chip Chat on RIP Radio Network. Chip.
All right, welcome back to Chip Chat here on Rip Radio Network. I'm your host, Chip. With me is Tez. Oops. All right, so uh, let's take a journey. Now we've come to the... Oh, sorry. I didn't do your favorite part. Damn it. Now we've come to the part of the show called The Rundown. We're going to tell you about some stuff that's gone on in the news. There we go. Okay. So <laughs> I want you to sort of, in your mind's eye, look at a map of the United States. In my mind's eye. Yes. Okay. That's a phrase i think i, I got think it, it from one of those things that you read the book i think yeah, it is that's it. It. it's a mind book eye. thing okay so there is a place called tennessee mm-hmm. and uh they have nominally two senators one of them is called marcia blackburn i uh, marcia blackburn is a semi-literate slug who was recently <laughs> elected. oh my no, god that's not fair to the slugs she's <laughs> She's a she's a senator from Tennessee. Recently, she tweeted out that the people of Tennessee want a wall on their southern border. The people of Tennessee want a wall on our southern border is what they said. You may know from looking at a map that the southern border of the ten, of Tennessee is Alabama, Mississippi, and, you know, a little tiny bit of Georgia maybe or something. Okay, but it's mostly those two. And, and everybody thought this was pretty funny. You know, why would she say this? Tennessee's not a border state. Doesn't need a, a wall on its southern border. It is one of the states that borders the most states. I think it's like eight or yeah, nine. So it right. touches a lot of states, right? Including Virginia. There it is. So you can see, right, it is a little bit of Georgia. So Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia is Tennessee's southern border. And you think, why would you need a wall there? This week, we found out why. It is because Mississippi Governor Tate Reeves, which is a name I'm not making up, even though it very much sounds like I am. That's him. That's him. That's his face. I'm not making that up either. Are we still making Tate? Yes. <laughs> Interesting note about Tate Reeves. During COVID, he was reading the names of all the kids who graduated high school in Tennessee, or I'm sorry, Mississippi. Because in Mississippi, it's a short enough list that the governor can read all of it. <laughs> he's governor because he's the one in Mississippi who can read. So he, his actual high school pranked him by putting in their list of graduates names like Mike Roch and, oh, you know, hey, would you buzz off and all that stuff. And he read them all out. And he was all like, of them? yeah, and he's like a page past when he realized that he'd been had. And he sort of looked up at the camera and smiled, which I thought was pretty funny. And then he kept on going. Okay, good on him for that. Look at him. Sense of humor. Yeah. Governor Reeves uh, signed some interesting proclamations for the month of April. He proclaimed April that, well, he signed the proclamation, right, that the, the, the House of Delegates, whatever they have, their General Assembly, passed declaring April Genocide Awareness and Prevention Month. What? And also Confederate Heritage Month. What? Yes. Now, in his defense, Mississippi has a law that every April is Confederate Heritage Month. He doesn't really have a choice in this, except that he could just not do it. But, like, you know, it would still happen. Right. Uh, but he did it very quietly. But then he loudly was excited about uh, Genocide Awareness Prevention Month. Quote, uh... Reeves decried the, he decried, quote, the systematic destruction of lives, adding that genocide has no place in society and we must do everything that we can to prevent it. Which seems like maybe you ought to read the Articles of Secession of Mississippi. It's pretty good. I I thought maybe Tennessee was trying to get a border before this reason. This right, is this why, is, right? right? So Tennessee, uh, maybe Tennessee is like looking across their southern border. And they go, "Whoa, those hicks are out of control." <laughs> you know, we here in Tennessee are perfectly fine with our cousins getting married and all kinds of awful stuff, and <laughs> you know, run of the mill racism and stuff. But we are not good with that level of discorded nonsense. There you go. No, that's not well. It's even below that. I think if you look down, she's got she's got one where she says, you know, we want a wall on ourselves. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that. 
We love, we love this fake story. Yeah, this fake Confederate story. I, the lost it's, cause. It's offensive. It's just is down. it? And I don't. I'm sorry. Like, it's heritage, look, not not look, hate. I, I I heard it on a bumper sticker. And again, remove us. You can't. You can't. Remove, let's just say. It was fought for some other reason, right? Let's just say black, black, <laughs> enslaved black folk wasn't the reason that this war was fought, right? It was fought over something else. It was fought over dandelions, all right? Sure. <laughs> right? We're into that. It. All right, cool. Fought, fought over well, I'm, I'm with you. Let's see where you're going with this. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm along for the ride. The, the, the rebels who were against dandelions, right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> rebels who were against dandelions. They were dandelions. against the union of dandelions. The union of dandelions. They lost. They did. They lost. Okay? So they... But Not you, only did they lose, but they raised arms against the United States. Yeah. And, again, when someone loses, usually you just don't... You, most places, you don't go out of your way to celebrate them. No. You mostly sort of they're they're a footnote or or even the butt of a joke. Yeah. I mean, how many times have I said something about the British? Exactly. You right? know, it's like or we're best French. friends with them or the French. Well, yeah, yeah, that's, damn, your the French, right. that's your favorite French, right? But like you know, we're best friends with England now. But I I will I I say it all the time. We won two wars not to have to use their their funny money. And right, and again, Confederate soldiers killed a lot. Of, of Americans, Americans. A lot they of, killed a, a lot, lot of, of American Americans. soldiers. Yeah. That's true. And again, they're celebrated here. And then again, let's just all right. Let's take away the dandelions. Let's There's just no put black folk to back into Yamamoto this. in Pearl right. Harbor. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Right. That would be insane. Right. But you right to add black folk back to it, and it's just like all right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Hashtag the blacks. The blacks. The exactly. blacks. Yes. Add the blacks back to this this conversation, and then it's like it's super offensive to us. It's like. Y'all went ahead and got back in bed with these motherfuckers, and we helped y'all win. Yes. There was no, this shit was over with. Y'all, again, people in New York, they rioted over this war. They said, no more. We're not going to fight for this shit anymore. Right. Again, we know Freeing what turns. Right? What the hell's going on? I don't know about I thought that. this was about unification. That's right. And it, maybe it was about unification. Yeah. In Seems one way be. or another. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a common enemy. Mm. It's all kind of fine. Really? It all worked out in the end. You know, like this argument, uh, we, what were we reading uh, recently about? Oh, Martha Washington. Oh. Okay. So we, we, we went to Mount Vernon. Uh, they had this, like, event with the animals and the sheep. You could pet them and whatever. Oh, of course. Kids. Yeah, it's kids lovely. Want, yeah. yeah, go hang out on the slaver's plantation and pet <laughs> his sheep. <laughs> this, is how, this, this, is, this is how they want it told. You want to know some crazy shit? They've restored the slave quarters at the, at the I mansion. Doing, yeah, I, I think they're trying to. They're working on more it, education right? So we're walking there. by it, and the kids who are much too young to understand go, "What are these houses?" Oh. And I said, "You know why Daddy's mad at everything all the time? <laughs> it starts there. That's why." Yeah. They go, "Okay." So we walk down the starts road there. where the, the the slave quarters are, and at the very end of it is a gift shop. They have turned the last house, the, oh, last, on. the last part of the slave <laughs> residence at Mount Vernon into a commercial enterprise. If every red cent of that <sighs> doesn't go to the descendants of, it should be burned to the ground. That is unbelievable. And they're selling like little teacups and tchotchkes and stuff. It's nothing. It's not like, you know, here's the story, you know, written by a, a freed slave or anything it's nothing like that no the last house it's like if you're walking from from the mansion down the row of this brick and and, and like to, to put this to put too fine a point on it in the middle is the the heat room the furnace room where the the only fire was and that was supposed to heat up this whole row of brick uh structure it's all one structure right. really you know brick will hold heat yeah, but not enough not, like not like that <laughs> so <laughs> as you walk past the men's bunk and the shoe shop and the blacksmith shop and the women's bunk. The last thing you get to is the gift shop. Commercial enterprise, right? Isn't this what it was all about? I mean, right. There's the, the, <laughs> I was like yeah, almost <laughs> vomiting when I saw that. I don't remember that being there. Like no, the, hundreds no. of times I've been I to Mount Vernon. I think they restored, they put that in there recently. 
I somebody from Mount Vernon call the show. I want to find out. I want to know where every penny of that goes because that is that is sick. And specifically pennies because Lincoln's on those. I, I, it's almost like it makes sense though. Doesn't it make sense that at the end of all of this, even at here's all of slavery, it, 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 it is gonna, a commercial enterprise. It's a commercial enterprise. So one of the things that, that we read from Martha Washington is like she she was pretty anti-slavery, which right. was mark you know remarkable at the time, and and she's like, which is easy to say with your your freaking husband. It's okay when you don't have to really worry about things, right? So, but but what she said is like, I don't I don't want there to be slavery, and I would free all of my slaves if there was some other economically viable way to run the estate, is what she said. And I'm like, okay, cool. So they're tractors. You're like fine with this if you could just wait it out until mechanization came and made this not economically viable to own human beings. And then what? Eli Whitney, the cotton gin pops up, and it's like, "Hold on, we're gonna go, we're gonna take this shit to the moon." I mean, we're like, gonna deal. that's exactly what it's like. I no, was new gonna technology is gonna come here. I, I, I can't. I mean, I was like almost about to throw up on Martha Washington's garden that was tended by slaves because I was like, "This is the most foul, disgusting thing I had seen." personally in in quite some time and again it's kind of i think it goes back to again how this country looks at it and it's like in i don't know what would be the, it would be the equivalent of like in germany if they had like again for the holocaust like if it was something like if they were had, you know, a, had a, a, a plumbing fixture <laughs> shop and they were selling shower heads you know, at auschwitz it's, it's like they it's, did that yes right they yeah they put up the sprinklers yeah they, you know the the thing the misters yeah. that keep you cool at the zoo. Right. They set those up outside Auschwitz to co- help keep people cool in the summers. It's it's hot in Poland, and they're like, yeah, we'll mist the people with these shower Yo. heads. And everybody walked in, and we're like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Showers? You're yeah. serious? Yeah, and like again, weddings happen on plantations to this day, and it's like I, I presided <laughs> over one. Like, right. I it's did like, it. No one blinks an eye at this shit because it's just like, yeah, what? A, who cares? It is what's what happening. There's some show on on TV with uh, it's like The Bachelor, but it's with a, a black woman, and it's called Courtship, I think. And it's she's celebrating like this Victorian era where men all dress in this thing, and she's yeah. got the big dresses, and they're all very polite, and they open the door and stuff. And she's like, you know, I just want things to be like, you know, back in the old times when men were this way and this. And I'm like, you mean the 1800? Like, lady. When the man, when he, when you he tw- couldn't participate in that. What when are he you talking down about? The dirt path down to those to, to the slave quarters. Like that's a, now the gift shop. It is. <laughs> so now the fucking gift I, shop. I, I, what do you mean? I couldn't understand how this show got past any kind of focus group. <laughs> Who no, looked at we this don't. and was like, "This but is you know, fine." But again, I think this is why, and most folks will say, "Like you're belaboring like oh, slavery was so long ago," but like. No, this no, country. You're supposed to just get over it. This right? country hasn't had. They haven't. There's not been a reckoning. Of no what truth and reconciliation. Yeah, like just to be like, oh, yo, this is what, like, this is what happened. And like, because this we can't is why even we still- agree on whether it happened or not. <laughs> Case in point. <laughs> yes, right. right here. Okay, here's the story from oh, Florida. God, We're yes. not going to make anybody guess. <laughs> there, the first uh, black guy state named Supreme to the Court. to the state Supreme Court yeah. in Florida. His his name was uh, Joseph Hatchett. He was an accomplished lawyer, brilliant judge, well-respected. Everybody liked him. Both Republican senators <laughs> of Florida, both of them, <laughs> Lil Marco and uh, that, that guy who looks like Voldemort. What's his name? <laughs> Rick Scott. Rick Scott. Uh, they proposed a bill to name a federal courthouse after Judge Hatchett, and it passed the Senate unanimously. Even Rand Paul, even... Even Uncle Scott, sorry, Tim Scott was in to name this courthouse. Like, no big deal. It, it, there's nothing that Congress can do except name post offices and buildings. Like, this is the only bills they can Simple pass. things they do, yeah, bipartisan support. Right, okay. So it goes to the House, and they've got, like, 35 co-sponsors. This is a non Partisan, no confrontation here. One of the sponsors is a is Florida Republican. His name is Vern Buchanan. All right, so Vern is like, yeah, we should vote for this. We'll do all the thing, right? So it get, gets up for the vote. Then, and, like the right, uh, like a right wing thing grabbed hold of this and it flipped it all. Congressman on its head. Andrew Clyde of Georgia, that's Herschel Walker's best friend. Oh, God, 
he who is famous for mounting a last minute effort uh, to well to try to overturn the election. He was one of the <laughs> one of the people who was like big on that. He went around person by person in the Republican caucus and told them, actually, you don't want to vote uh, for this guy because he's black. No, he didn't say that. He said <laughs> he, said right. he, said he had some other uh, dumb thing because, uh, I don't know, I, I have no idea. Oh, he, no, no, he said uh, he didn't like the... In in 1999, I think there was a decision that Hatchet to strike. He, he struck down a public school policy allowing student approved prayers uh, at graduation ceremonies in Florida. So that's the that's the pre yeah. So really, nigga. There, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yes, there, exactly. No, again, louder for the people in the back, Brian. Like, so he goes around really, nigga. And he even gets to Vern Buchanan. Co-sponsor of the bill. That's a funny one right there. And wow. Then, and and so then he votes against it. And so then the reporters are like, how did this fail? <laughs> no, what are you no, talking right. about? And they go, they, obviously the first thing to do is go to the sponsors of the bill and ask them. And, and then they get to Buchanan and they're like, why did you vote against your own bill? And he goes, I don't know. <laughs> it's got to be better than I don't know. It has to be. Well, he didn't want to say the other thing. You already said it, though. He did say it. Exactly. <laughs> he did. Christ. Like, <laughs> it's I, a building. It's the least consequential thing that could possibly happen. Yeah. Give the man his due. It's not a big deal. And and people who look like the judge will probably still go into that building and still probably and still fairly, end up with, yeah, exactly. with million year sentences <laughs> yeah, exactly. for parking it's tickets every- and whatever. You can have again. It's like what we talked about with with voting for for KBJ. Like you have this opportunity to at least be on paper doing the right thing, and still having the apparatus oppress everybody. You'd be like, I voted for the 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 black judge courthouse. It's midterm. You don't even season, have to baby. learn his name. It's midterm. You can just be season. like, I voted for black judge courthouse, where I hope that lots of black, <laughs> black people. Judge courthouse yeah. is funny as shit. Yeah, that is exactly. You don't need to know his name. No, black judge courthouse. Yeah. Exactly. That's right. That, <laughs> that's exactly it. That's it. Really, it. But no, you still choose again. I. It's very. It's it's insane that it. Mm. Again, cooperation is what makes us great. Oh, <laughs> again, yeah, that's a, yeah. that remember that's what that's what we need at this time. I mean, Vern Buchanan, it's pretty Irish. He can't right? even cooperate. This guy's like as white as can be, and yeah. he, you know, he sponsored the bill to name it Black Judge Courthouse, and then he voted against, against it. That's insane. You didn't. Yeah. Like, it's a waste of time. Well, they don't. I care know. About that. <laughs> I know. Uh, so, speaking of waste of time, Jared. Mm. Now, everybody named Jared is categorically the worst. That's true. Whether they're selling Subway sandwiches or, or jewelry? you know, je- yeah, jewelry or <laughs> trying to unmake the Republic. They're all part basically the same. Mm. So as you may remember, there was this guy, Jared, who is nominally married to Ivanka Trump, uh, which is unfortunate for, I think, everybody involved. But Jared. And he had a famous daddy. Yeah. Who went to jail. <laughs> who was a good Democrat. He was a good Democrat. Demo- donated to all the yeah. right people. That's <laughs> yes. great. Okay, so Jared uh, famously was in charge of literally everything during the Trump administration. Basically, anything that came up, Trump's without answer a security was, clearance. Without a security clearance, <laughs> Trump's answer was like, "We're going to give this to Jared. He's going to handle it. He was going to sp- supposed to create peace in the Middle East. He was yeah. supposed to beat the coronavirus. He was going to like uh, do infrastructure. He's going to make the economy grow, solve racism. He had this like Everything. small list of small stuff. list of things. He had you know and and lots of experience in all of it. I'm sure. All right. So, but one of his key things that he did was go schmooze uh, MBS. Noted loved murderer him, yes. MBS. He loved him uh, some Saudis. Yeah, well, but and one in particular, the one, MBS. The one, the, I mean, the one who makes the decisions around. But him. there's other Saudis in the family yeah, that he, but you know, the, yeah, locked no. up in hotels. The crown prince is the, who you talk to. Okay, so Jared, crown prince of Trumplandia, goes talks yeah, exactly. to exactly two to, crown princes. That's right. All right, <laughs> two so, crown princes cutting it up. They kind of they 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 struck a deal. Now, MBS has this problem. The Saudis have gobs of money from oil, yeah. but they know that they're going to run out of oil and that the world and is, the world may be eventually not is right not now interested in forever burning oil. Mm-hmm. So they're like, we need to get diversified economically. 
And the other Gulf Arabs are ahead of them on that. And so they're a little worried, right? So they're like, all right, cool. We need to get into like hedge funds and stuff like that. Yeah. All right, I get it. You're a billionaire. So you got a lot of money. What are you going to do? You look around for somebody who knows how to manage money, who knows how to run some stuff. And basically you give him the money and say, make me as much money as you can with this and we'll give you a fee. And, you know, that's pretty standard billionaire shit, right? They Consultants. all do this. Yeah, well, they're yeah, not kindly, just, but they're like yeah, fund, managers, fund managers. Yeah, fund managers. Right? Okay, I don't know shit about the markets. I'm not some sort of genius or whatever. I pay you money to take my money. I give to my money to money. T. Rowe Price. You go invest it. You get some of it in return. I get the rest of it in return. Everybody's happy. It's a mutually beneficial. It's called a mutual fund. We even have like a <laughs> word for name for Okay. It. So MBS is like, all right, I'm going to set up a couple of these. One of them he sets up with Mnuchin. He gives him a billion dollars. But Mnuchin's a money guy. Yeah, he's, he's an investor. This sort of mostly makes sense. So the people... He robs poor people blind. Yeah, he's good at that. So so on the board of the Saudi like money director's board, they all go, all right, this guy checks out. We checked all his, his stuff. He's got a track record of making gobs of money, you know, and exploiting people and, you know, harming women along the way. That sounds like <laughs> right up our alley. We're good right. with that. And then they go, he's Jewish. And they go, ah, it's fine. I'm oh. good with money. <laughs> exactly. So so then they're like, you got any more of them around that you're friends with? And like the side, the side are like, well, actually, most of the Jewish folks don't really get down with us because, you know, what with all trying to kill them all the time. And uh, they're like, but we know this one dude, his name is Jared Kushner. That sounds pretty Jewy. All right, call him up. So they call him up. Jared, what if we gave you $2 billion dollars? What would you do with it? And and could you make us some money? And Jared's like, yes, I've got a great plan. And he sends him the plan. And it's like to buy a bunch of ice cream trucks or shit. It's but not the not, nationals? None of it, right, no. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to buy the buildings I worked at, but that's a whole other story. Uh, so he, 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 go, he, he sends him this plan. And they look at it and they go, well, this sucks. <laughs> Nothing on here makes any sense. And in fact, their statement... You know, in, in uh, Billy Madison, when when at the end he says this dumb thing and the judge in the, like, intellect contest goes, everyone is dumber for having listened to you. <laughs> I award you no points and may God have mercy on yourself. Right. It, this sort of reminds me of this. So here's the, here's the quote uh, from the panel that screens the investments for the Sovereign Wealth <laughs> Fund. Let's hear it. Okay. Those objections included, quote, the inexperience of of the affinity fund management, meaning Jared, uh, the possibility that the kingdom would be responsible for, quote, the bulk of the investment and risk, due diligence on the fledgling firm's operation that found them, quote, unsatisfactory in all aspects, a proposed asset management fee that seems, quote, excessive and public and a public relations risk because <laughs> he's tied up in the January 6th stuff. Uh, from when Mr. They're Kushner's worried about role is, yeah, they're worried about it. These guys chop up <laughs> no, people don't. they don't like. According to the New York Times, every member of the panel who was present at the meeting, quote, stated that they were not in favor of investing with Kushner, but didn't matter. MBS gave him the money anyway. And Jared gets $25 million a year in fees to run this thing. I now, mean, listen. Look. Mr. MBS. <laughs> Mr. I don't know. Yeah, uh, that's a good place to start. Okay. I am also Jewish and therefore good with money. Uh, if you gave me, I don't know, let's say a tenth of your $2 billion throwaway fund. Apparently you're throwing away $2 billion. Give us a tenth. Mm -hmm. We'll put Tez's name on it. Okay. So that's it fine. looks a little better. More legit. Right? You know, and I'll... Especially I'll, my real name. Yeah, it's definitely... Yeah, it's <laughs> very <laughs> official. It, <laughs> Looks like one of your colonial rulers <laughs> on paper. On so, paper. Uh, so all right. So you give me the money, and and I will definitely, for the right price, overlook like a lot of stuff. Like, I look, I don't think women need to drive either. Like, that's not a big deal for me. No, they should drive. They need a carpool. But like, what are we gonna? Don't give me the money. You know where? You know where I'm giving the money to. You're gonna give it to poor people. No, well, books. Yeah, maybe, yeah. You're gonna buy books. I, books is one of those. I was gonna coffee. say coffee. I was gonna say I want my own. I was gonna start my own uh, journalism company. Since you uh, want to knock off the other ones, 
That's not Bastard. no. You're gonna get chopped up. This is not no, no, no. don't give it Bastard. to him. Yeah, exactly. He's gonna chop up your money, much like you did with Jamal Khashoggi. So uh, no, don't do that. They don't listen to the show, do they? I hope not. Uh, shit, we're in <laughs> trouble. Fuck. <laughs> That's it. Jeez. This is a terrible idea, but they gave it to Jared anyway. No, I mean obviously, no, right? <laughs> but it whole... answers this question: Why is Jared talking to the J Six? Because he wants out. He wants a clean enough slate that he can get this kind of money. Yeah, go back to doing no one. Everybody wants to go. First of all, right? The whole we knew from the reaction of this whole <laughs> the whole election team when they won. We knew that they said, "Wait a minute!" I thought that I always thought this this whole campaign was a grip. Was I knew it was a grip, but I was like, "Yo, wasn't he getting ready to file for bankruptcy prior to this?" I thought this was like, "Hey, we get some like nice campaign money going in here. You know, those, those rules are nice, and like we can flout them, whatever." He wins once you're in it, and you have the power of the United States government behind you. Why wouldn't if you if you're yeah? Family, but you also stuck those are four years they couldn't make any money. They couldn't. They couldn't. But you could set up. But you but could, they could see, set you up could to set go up, make the money. Like we're not we're, we're not a year everywhere. and a half out. Yeah. No, that's why I never thought he wanted. To, uh, the only reason I thought he might want to win one more time is to do this on a stretch of eight years to get eight years worth of money. But yeah, like come on now. I. So that's what that I mean. That's what's going on. The, it, they have no credibility. Imagine when you know the like when you know all the secrets it's of the United States. Transparent and ridiculous. Though. Yo, you like, can make so many like the deals. You, like yeah, and of course MBS is like, oh, of course, give him the money. It's my friend. He wants more friends. That's what it seems like MBS wants more friends. That's exactly what he's doing. He's Shit. trying to buy because he's hoping that the Trumps win again. Yeah, and that then you know they can take some of the heat off of him for doing all of the awful stuff. It's a bribe on its face. It's so obviously stupidly transparent. These people are are, are like stupid Watergate. It is stupid Watergate all over the that. time. These people just doing the same dumb thing over and over. Speaking of which. Oh, your friend. Governor Abbott of Texas. Now, just because he can't rise up doesn't mean he won't make prices rise up. <laughs> Why does he just take this? Because it's there. Because the jokes just roll right off my tongue. <laughs> Much like Governor Abbott down the stairs. So here's what's going on in Texas. Texas is a border state, unlike it Tennessee. It is a border state. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. And they have a lot of cross-border traffic between Mexico and Texas. And it's tremendous. I mean, it's a lot of stuff. It's, it's car parts. It's uh, produce. It's everything you can think of comes across this border at an unbelievable clip. There's nothing like it in the world. If you can just look at it, go go find a picture of it. And the, the number of trucks, it's insane. Okay, and customs border protection is all there, and they they're screening these trucks. You got these giant, you know, when you go to the airport and you put your bag in the thing yeah. and it goes to the X-ray. They got one of those for trucks, so they park the truck. Our the finest machine, agents, our finest department, scans Monitoring the truck. The- they, they x-ray everything in there. That's why your avocados taste a little funny. Like, all of that stuff goes through, and it gets scanned. And The, the cocaine? Yeah, that too. <laughs> okay, so to be fair, this is why the wall is stupid, right? Because the vast majority of drugs and illegal hey, stuff go over that. comes not through the desert. Yeah. It comes through on these trucks and through yeah. the, the legitimate crossings and stuff. But it mostly has to do with people bribing yeah, officials. Yeah, come on, man. Pay them okay. more, and they might not, maybe they'll find more. Eh? <laughs> Maybe. All right. Well, or not have to hire cartel members like the George W. Bush administration. Did. Mm. Okay. So uh, <laughs> Governor Abbott is like, you know, I have a way to make things worse for everybody in America. How about I create a secondary set of checkpoints for all of these trucks at a state level after the feds have already checked them? Now, this is wildly unconstitutional because there's all yeah, kinds right? of, yes, only the federal government the has the authority law, right? to, to enforce <laughs> yeah. the borders and manage customs and all of that stuff. It's very, very clear, but that doesn't matter in Texas because remember in Texas, they believe that they can leave whenever they want. They, the Constitution is applied to them. That's the whole reason people went to Texas in the first place, Except right? for the Second Amendment, which yeah. is the part they really so The liked. reason they went there is like, get going to Texas. Was it GGT? Yeah, and uh, what did uh, Davy Crockett say? Y'all can go to hell. I'm going to Texas, which he said in Tennessee, believe it or not. There's mm-hmm. the corollary. All right, so anyway, he set up these checkpoints. Now Isn't Baylor trucks- in Texas? Yes. Oh, it's hell. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm Don't ask you. the Methodists. Yeah. <laughs> it's a whole, like, religious fo- football war going on in Texas you probably don't know about, but it's insane. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, so like he sets up these checkpoints. And now these trucks are waiting for like days, literally days, 30 some odd hours to clear these secondary checkpoints. Meanwhile, the fruit's going bad in him. He's created like he's created the same backups that we had at the ports. Yes, because of what but on purpose. purpose. Yeah, and it's driving up costs. It's driving up prices. It is driving up inflation. And and of course, it it fits their narrative. This is somehow Biden's problem. He is directly contributing to inflation. Uh, Jen Psaki, probably. The best at this press secretary job. Didn't since. I tell you since she was going to what's in? What, what oh, she's going to take yeah. Matt out. Yeah, show. I, yeah. Well, now Matt is only on once a week. But so I told, I told you, fine. and she's already said. I think in the spring she's already going. Yeah, or, she's or, ready to go. Or, or not the spring in the fall. She'll be out of there. Uh, these actions are impacting people's jobs and livelihoods and hardworking families in Texas and across the country. Saki said, it's not a political statement. That's a statement of fact. I'd also note that we're seeing these unnecessary inspections of trucks, transport, transiting ports of entry between Texas and Mexico as significant delays, which are resulting in a drop in commercial traffic of up to 60 to 70 percent at some of these ports. This is why the shelves are empty. That's exactly why. <laughs> you know, so I, I think I understand what the deal is. Governor Abbott can't reach the stuff on the top shelves. Oh, God. So no. he's trying to create no. shortages no. to move everything to the lower shelves where he can get it. I'm just guessing. Or he could be like the Brazilians and spending all their military money on Viagra. I don't know. He did send the National Guard to the border where they are all reportedly saying... We don't know what's going on. And they formed a union to get the hell out of that job. <laughs> Believe it or not, you want to know how bad you got to be as a governor that you, you force your actual National Guard to form a union. There is a union of guardsmen in Texas. Unions are back. Yeah, kind of. No, it's, it's going to start. It's gonna, I think Let's it's gonna, hope. I'm, I got my fingers crossed. Power to the people. Proletariats unite. That's right. <laughs> no. <laughs> Comrade Tez. <laughs> I waited to give my American citizenship before I started talking about that That's shit. right. <laughs> Socialist break. <laughs> Look. All right. Tell you what. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll nationalize Tez and make sure that he's – we'll check him for pink money. That's what we're going to do. We're going to see if he, he – you don't get the claim going to the moon, though. Because you were British when we did that. No, I wasn't. You weren't anything. You didn't exist <laughs> exactly. yet. But he's, check, he's got green money. All right. All he's right. Got, yeah, well, the Hamilton's a little pink. <laughs> they, they, you got counterfeit. That's not me. You, I didn't. I don't like these you. new Hamiltons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, got you. A little too pink. Must have Harry Tubman. Yeah, the, well, that's on the no. That's, that's the Jacksons. A, that's the Jacksons. There's a way to color it to make it look that way. So I mean, and look, I want Harry Tubman on, but to honestly, a Native American should, re should replace it. Andrew Jackson. Jackson. It that's should, that should be like, how that goes. That's right, right. Yeah, it can't like. Look, I'm just Tubman saying. should get the two. Yeah, where Jefferson is. Jefferson, yeah, get him in. Yeah. Right. Get Jefferson off, Tubman on. He loves black women. Yeah. <laughs> He'd be fine with it. <laughs> Love it. She's right up his alley. You're right. Right up his Sally. Oh! Oh! <laughs> That's right. good. With that, we're going to take a break. You're listening to Chip Chat on Ripped Radio Network. <laughs>
All right, welcome back to Chip Chat here on Rip Radio Network. I'm your host, Chip. With me is Tez. Sweeps. Okay, now we've come to the part of the show that we sometimes get to do. Yeah. Uh, I don't have the Scott Simon music, but uh, it's now it's time for sports. Okay, but not the good kind. What we're going to talk about is the Washington football team. Yeah. I'm not using the new the name. Commies. I think it's I think it's dumb. It's commies. But <laughs> yeah, the com- well, it's not that. I would be fine with that. But no, I... Uh, it, the Washington Commanders, the the Washington NFL franchise, is principally owned <laughs> by, uh, unfortunately, my cousin Danny. No, it's not your cousin. Don't well, we that. are not related, but yeah. he is a member of the tribe. He's going so. for the Ted Cruz look, right? Yeah, he is. He's, yeah. he's working on the Ted Cruz thing. Okay, so the the he's looking. He's in, he's he, watching him age is crazy. Just him getting the team is like as like. Just a youngster, right? Yeah, was he 31 but he's, or something yeah, like that? he was in his 30s, and then, now he's he was a sniveling little shit then, and he's a <laughs> yeah. slightly older and somehow thinner sniveling little shit now. Um, okay, so as people may know, the what the fucks are under investigation by every authority there is. Uh, including Transit. the NFL themselves, uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but <laughs> specifically Congress. Yes. Okay. Uh, Congress is interested because they've got this uh, sort of pattern of bad behavior in terms of uh, you know sexual harassment and all kinds of other stuff, and they want it. They want it. Congress has an oversight duty. They want to get to the bottom and, of this. And Congress likes low hanging fruit shit like this. Anyways, yeah. this is what they 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 love to meddle with the baseball. Where with they like to get into these things. Well, and nominally we're and talking about the antitrust exemptions yes. and stuff like that, right? The NFL is a cartel. They they yeah. have a monopoly on football, though possibly with the USFL and the XFL coming in. I'm hoping just this is a tangent, but I'm hoping that they do well enough that we can end up with a relegation system where mm-hmm. you go up. And down between the three leagues, and then never happening. I know, but it would, make, yeah, know, it would, would give me a reason yes. to watch yes. the Jets, for example. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> yes, right. it definitely would. Okay, I mean, you. I was watching the Burnley Norwich game like yeah. with great uh, attention, course. right? Yeah. Why? Because it's consequential. Because yeah. you know. All right. So anyway, Danny's on, under investigation, and nominally they're under investigation for all kinds of other stuff, like you know, cuddling cheerleaders and. Doing all kinds of Escort weird services. financial yeah, garbage finances. and whatever, blah, blah, blah. But somewhere in this, the committee gets their hands on this letter from a, a guy, I think his name is Friedman, yep. uh, who worked for the team for 24 years. And he has the receipts that show that they kept two sets of books. That's a hell of a quote. When, when, when you're an organization and it comes out that you have two sets of books... It's just yeah. It gets it gets real. It gets it's just real bad when that is said, and, and because that means you're avoiding you're avoiding something. something. So whether the taxes, it, it turns out, it, yeah. yeah. But it's not just taxes. Yeah. So one of the things that's really telling in this is that the word they used for the illicit money that they were sort of hiding on their books is juice. They called it the juice. So they if they like faked an account or whatever, they would chalk it up to the juice. So in their emails, they all go, yeah, just move that account to the juice. That's bro as shit and awful and just, ugh. Gotta love smart criminals. Right. Uh, okay, so one of the, the ways that they would do this is security deposits. If you got season tickets at FedEx, they called it a seat lease and they collected a security deposit in addition to your yearly fee. Right. Okay, in case you're what, destroy the seat or something? I don't know. It's pretty ridiculous. Those seats are pretty tough. Uh, they just kept them all. So every time people, like, finish their season tickets or they opted out or they just didn't want to continue anymore, they just kept the security deposits. And they did it in, like, the most obvious of ways. They just denied when people asked them, like, can I have it back? And they went, no. And they, they concocted some dumb scheme where, like, the only way to send to get it back was you had to, to send it in on the... Remember on Car Talk when they'd be like, send us your answer oh, on the yeah. back of, like, a yeah, yeah. 1910 uh, espresso machine minted in such and such town in Italy or whatever? That's what they did. And so nobody got their security deposits back. But interestingly enough, they kept the security deposits uh, from some important people. Quote, two season tickets that appeared to be registered right. under 
Roger Goodell's name appeared uh, as as recently as July of 2016 had an unreturned security deposit of $1,000. They kept Goodell's security deposit. They also kept the security deposits of 28 seats that were purchased by the NFL itself. Now, listen, we're talking about small amounts of money here. It adds up to like $5 million that they did or whatever, but that's not the, the end of it. They also weren't paying their fair share into, into the, the NFL. NFL, right? Yeah. So when there's a home game, 40% of the money of the ticket sales from the home game is supposed to go to the NFL to be distributed to the visiting team and throughout the league. It's basically for you know parity's sake and it helps right. fund a bunch of things or whatever. They pocketed that. They chalked that money up to Kenny Chesney concerts and Notre Dame Navy football games and all kinds of other stuff. The specific Kenny Chesney concert that some of this got tagged to was on May 25th of 2013, and that that names, that names date stuck out to me because I had a friend who went to that show and brought me a shirt from it. <laughs> so I've got this shirt that's got that. It's Kenny Chesney and Tim McGraw. It was a pretty good concert, and I didn't get to go. But, like, that sticks out, okay? They kept this money. It's one thing for Dan Snyder to be a shit owner, treat his players terribly, treat us fans like... I don't even know what to call it. We're not even abused anymore. We're just like, yeah, molested. That's yeah. Oh, my called. God. I it mean, is. You are. Yeah. We're, we're it's a being, molested fan base. Yeah. We're, it is that. It's, it's it is awful. that. It is awful. That is, it feels terrible. He didn't yeah. even, even spit on it first. All right. So, like, <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> no loop. But you know what? He, but the problem is he also stole from the other members of the cartel. Now, listen, Danny, there's only 31 people in the whole fucking planet that you can't steal from. So and from. you stole from them. So what are the, I mean, like, this the, it, it, this how is, long can this last? I think it's done from, I think this, I think if it's not this, if it's not this, something else is going to break. That ha, because you can, what else could there possibly be? I get, I get that We're Roger Goodell. We're selling our work. cheerleaders yeah. to, to like you know high better. dollar season ticket yeah. holders who apparently who, who were not giving their, 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 their security <laughs> deposits back, stealing money from the commissioner of the league and from the league itself, not giving money to the other owners that they're I, owed. I can't wait till the Washington Post and ESPN. Do the thirty for thirty on this shit. I it's going that, to that'll be, be a two parter. It's, it's gonna be a, be a two parter. For <laughs> it's gonna be I mean, come insane. on, insane. So we call it's a Ken Burns documentary. I mean, yeah, come yo, on, yo, they <laughs> might bring him in too. Yeah, they, <laughs> yeah, they might bring his ass in too. But yo, I, this is gonna it's gonna be one for the ages. Of what like, am I so, okay? Let's get down to you the, what am I not supposed to do? Too, because you can do. The fans as well too. Like you, you weave the fans into this the as most well. Screwed up fans. Yeah. Like, like, what am I <laughs> supposed do to do? You here. do the history early before where it is at the ending of it, and like, oh, I can't the, wait. As a fan, not me. Not I'm a Ravens fan. Yeah, Ravens. As this is for a Chip. Yeah. That's Track where we, my that, life. That's as, where you should all go to the Ravens. A, uh, yes. Now, run. <laughs> Where you can. Yeah. I. It is the highly unfortunate. Is it's highly unfortunate. Did you have to deal with this dude? And uh, I mean, you thought things would be suffice up until the draft. You know. You. No. But no. This. This. This is sad. And it's. And I had these. I've had these conversations with uh, you know with some people who feel like look, the NFL needs to get some balls and take this team away from them. If it's not happen, it, it well here's it's the thing. They they the, but they already had to give him a waiver on his finances because he he leveraged. He, he borrowed against the team's value to try to buy the other 60% right. that he doesn't own. Oh, yeah, right. And so that put the team in so much debt that they're not solvent. Right. Much like Everton, not <laughs> solvent. Had to get a waiver from the league yeah. to, to even still be like a legitimate franchise. But the thing is, is what, I, what I keep hearing is, is like, look, if, if the league doesn't want it, the league is afraid to take it from them. Because of the fact that it's a bad Dan, precedent. Well, that yeah. and Daniel may have some whatever dirt. But the thing is, is like, look, there's already shoot, he's been throwing shit balls at you guys for now Yo. a year. It took the NBA about five minutes. Yeah, to five strip minutes the Clippers. to get, get rid of that's Sterling. That's different, though. That, no, just, it's not different. It's different, not different. But it's but not. But it's, silver, silver just took over that job. He was gonna go. Nah, that was the, and the way that the, the way it's split in that league with the money. 
the, like it's different between the players in the NFL. But but the thing is, like, okay, the, the only the, dif- the only difference between the NBA and the NFL is this: the NBA is a full on players league. The players right. own that shit. That's yes. right. So, As so it but, should be. Yeah. So, but the thing is, with that when, what, thing again. yeah. So when Sterling said that what he trouble. said, pretty much is like, look, we've had enough of this, and especially he's been it, saying shit. He's been saying, been saying it, but it got to the point where it's like enough was enough. Even the white players were like, nah. Yeah. So even the Eastern European white players were like, yeah, yeah, yeah is yeah. potato. Yeah. So with the <laughs> NFL, this for the NFL, especially when one of your own is like he said. You're stealing from us? Hell no. It's over for him. It should be. But, so, but they, he, honestly, he, for, for Roger Goodell to not, to, to pretty much, he, he's been getting dildoed, right, every damn. That's what he gets week. paid over $100 million to do. Yeah, right. I understand that. And, and not do is anything. out there with him, too. She's running security for him. Right. She is. She is. But, but what are we, I mean, as a fan, Focus. what, you, what, what am I supposed to well, do? As you, quit it. You should honestly boycott. You have to. You I have can't. to. You no, can. No, you can. You can. This team does nothing for you. Not this team. The owner. The owner does not. hate it, the owner. Yes, you hate the owner. The only way to save the, the only way to save the team is to boycott it so you so you, that owner can go away. And it's the only way. As dedicated as as folks was to go out there in the commander uniforms mm-hmm. when when it was. Folks should be out there who have the time. Like, folks, I don't know who, you know who it might be? It might be those CRT moms. That mm-hmm. might be who, because I think they have the time. They do. And the fan, they probably are fans of it. And Virginia. they're mad and they're angry. They're mad yeah. and angry. They need to be outside that stadium every day well, boycotting this, yeah, this but team. Yeah, they, but they're not, like, this doesn't affect them. They're fine with this. I mean, yeah. I mean, here's who, here's who it really affects. It affects. They would sell their daughters to be cheerleaders yes, on this team. Yes. <laughs> It, let's put it this way. It really affects this team. Is the fact has always affected those who supported this team since since birth, and and those people who lived in the city and things like that who cried for it, for it being where it is right now. Meaning yeah. it's out in PG County and Jack it, Cook and it's, yeah, and it's yeah and it, <laughs> and Jack wanted to stay, but the. Freaking city didn't want to keep him there. And What's the name? Uh, what was it Sharon Pratt Kelly? Yeah, Sharon yeah. Pratt Kelly. Sharon Pratt Kelly. They, she, she bet and she lost. For right. That one. She lost. So, right. so pretty much it's like the, you, the city's been hurting. Everybody's been hurting. But then you get an odor in here like this. Figuring it's like it'll be a savior, but it hasn't. Because all he's, it, this is a big money grab for him. He's been, and I know people who worked in but that place. But he's lost money. The team that's is what worth I'm saying. less now than when he paid for it. I understand that. And the thing is, I know people who worked there and the, and. Based on you know not just the, the it's worthless, but will it sell for that? No, no, it's gonna no, sell it's for, still yeah. in the billions. Yeah, it's a billion ahead. dollar it's franchise. Ahead. But the thing is, is like that's what Daniel's counting on. It's as long ahead. as as long as he whatever renovations FedEx gets, whatever it's new deals he probably will get from this team. All right, so how do we accelerate the sale? I mean, just, honestly, he, just he, might have, he, yeah. might have, he might have did it. He yeah, what, what's point. going on here now? That will do it. Because it's going to be another bombshell that drops as well, too. It's going to go on throughout the what's season. What's left to happen? I mean, what's uh, left careful. to happen? Be careful. Yeah. I don't be careful. You don't know. Yeah, you don't, you don't know. know. Yeah, you do not know. I mean, still y'all, the only y'all are t- making this case like it's so strong. And, 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 it and is. Again, I want to be clear. Right. You're right. Mm-hmm. Okay, both of you are right. Mm-hmm. Everything about this is legitimate. I am the bad person here. I'm wrong. <laughs> I am tied to this burgundy and gold. I'm, I, I mean, like, you know, I mean, look at Dez, right? Mm-hmm. Dez did this dumb thing with the, with the go blue and all that stuff. I love <laughs> Dez. I, I don't care. I don't care. You put on the, the, the uniform and the helmet, I see that. I don't care who's wearing the uniform or root for him. Right? Like, I, I... Sports are so much better when you take a step back and then you just kind of look at all the fuckery that goes on. Like for me, I all it, it's so I envy like, you. like for me now. I want to like, get like to that. I want to get to that. I'm like, well, look at this team that like I used to like my whole identity was wrapped up into, and now I, I want to get at, to that. And now I can look at it now and just be like, yo, this how is, did I you achieve like, this level of zen? See, see, <laughs> like, great guru. Thing, see, see, I was able to rip the bandaid off a long time ago. Like I said, you I told, made the choice though. I, you because ripped it off. Because that was the purple. I was, I was, a, I was a fan for a good ten plus years. 
Up until when Daniel Snyder bought the team, I gave him those two first two years of the team, and Generous. went like, and when he, fought, when he <laughs> and, yes, Generous. and when he when he fired Marty Schottenheimer after an eight and eight year, mm. when the team started zero and five, and I felt like okay, this is going to be almost like Joe Gibbs when you know his first year was right, but Danny Boy was stupid enough to fire this dude. Who, Who's a my, legend? Who is a legend? Hall a, of Famer. Hall of Famer and a very well known coach. And you fired him after an eight eight year where pretty where he pretty much gutted your bullshit fantasy team. Oh, he did. Yes. Yeah. So that was the same, and Ooh. that was ego. And then from that point on, it's like, fuck you, Dan. Fuck this team. I'm gonna go and stay in Baltimore. Yeah, but I can't do that. Yes, you can. How? You like the yes, Baltimore you Orioles. can. That was my home team, though. We didn't have your damn Expos here yet. <laughs> <laughs> All of this stuff doesn't matter. If the Expos yeah, were here matter. when I was when I was born, I would have been. I'm, I would matter. be as attached to the Nats as I am to the O's. All of this. This is again. I didn't choose any of this. Sports, I was assigned my team. Sports <laughs> don't matter. Okay, that's crazy talk. <laughs> Tell that to an English person. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> Sports don't matter, and I love I I, I love them as much as uh-huh, you. Guys I'm about do. to say something terrible about the Gunners and see how he how he reacts no, to that. I <laughs> I'm sitting here in a national. No, relegate and relegate and Arsenal. That doesn't happen because my team it's is decent. never gonna. Uh, it's decent. It's not a bad team. You know we have a bad match. The Crunkies know what they're doing you, over there. You want to happen? That's right. You, what happens? <laughs> could you have, listen? You could be. A, you could be on when a, your team the, goes to the Super Bowl in the NFL. You could be <laughs> on the precipice of a hundred-year relegation too, buddy. And I can tell you, it doesn't Look, feel great. It doesn't. No, it doesn't feel great. And I get. And don't tell me sports don't matter. No, no, no. no if no. Everton ends up falling out of Premier League, they don't. It's because a, I can't is, feel like you that. know what it should be. This is like when it's, if the, if and when the Washington Football Team becomes good again. I'll jump back on. There's a like, like, people like jump back on the bandwagon. Yeah, shit. I was here for the band. Like, jump off. It's That's okay. what everyone says. Like, you know, this whole thing will go away if, if the team wins. Okay, we you got until win. We, yeah, you got you got you got five months until that happens or possibly happens. Y'all just making but, me depressed. I mean, what am I supposed all, to do all about I'm saying, this? All I'm saying is, as of now, who's the starting quarterback? I would, uh, who, yeah, that. There we go. <laughs> who's the starting quarterback on this team? It's gonna be Heineke after Wentz gets hurt. Right. I mean, we know the plan, right? right. So um, what I'm saying to you is, it's best. Apparently, could have had Matt Ryan for much less. I'm so, telling you this, know. just like, just like. Mira Bowser, if she says today, if she's like, eminent domain, I'm snatching up all this land in Mazda Gallery and Friendship Heights. We're building affordable housing. It's deeply affordable. Woo, I'm going to the polls. And I'm like, all right, let's go Bowser. Damn, yo, it's, it's, it's that simple for me. Mm-hmm. It's that simple. Yo, do something where people if she feel- delivers for what you need. Yeah, yeah deliver yeah. on it. No, I understand deliver that. Deliver on it. The team, man, go, go win. Yeah. And that, you know what it is for me with the, for, for, uh, the Washington football team? You go get someone like Colin Kaepernick sitting out here like, yo, you, you'll watch, you, it will be crazy I, how you would. I think Harbaugh's going to hire him. He was hanging out yeah. there at the spring game up there in Ann Arbor, and he was, you know, they were all chummy and stuff. Again, they go out there and they go, you know, they go get uh, Colin Kaepernick and he goes and replaces Wentz, who's going to get injured, and then Heineke's going to get injured. Glass Wentz and Trump, yeah, both. Trumpy Heineke. Both of them. <laughs> and he goes out there and he went, he goes into the second, he goes into the, uh, Makes the playoffs. He makes the playoffs. Wins a wild card game. All forgiven. Pretty well. All forgiven. But I, I, but I, I, but this but the sad part is like I said the sad part is this thing will hover over still. I, I feel mean, like it, it's a thing though that as a fan you know like you earn this. This is this is my scar too, and I know that's not reasonable. I didn't do anything wrong. It's not real. I didn't cook the books. You win on Sunday, no matter when they lose. You win. You go outside. You chill with your family. Yeah, when yeah, Arsenal yeah. loses, I got to the point. They lost on Saturday, or they lost on no, Sunday. I can't do that. They lost. I didn't lose. Okay, well, I didn't okay. lose. Then, then the, the Nationals the, lost right, tonight. So, Not me. All right, for me, it's a different story when the Ravens lose. No, I know yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, you see that? You see that? Brian punched doors. <laughs> Brian punched doors when the Ravens won. They won. <laughs> they won that night. No, you when it was the Ravens door. in the game, it was this. It was the Steelers game. It was Steelers, but I wanted to see the Steelers lose, which they did. They did. But he was. He thought they won, so he was mad, and that was that's. It's a reflection rivalry thing. Yeah, okay. So, like, whatever. I mean, 
But you need to rip that Band-Aid off. I yeah. can't do that. You, you can. can come back when you don't good. want to, but I've you can. I've already got my kids set up. They're all they're all big, you know, what the fuck keep, fans keep, and keep, all that Keep stuff. pushing them as Caps fan. Keep pushing them as they're an Oil fan. That. Good. As long as those... They're big O's it. fans. They're big yeah, Bulls just, fans. And, yes. You know, everything's like, good. As long as, as, long as oh. Daniel Snyder is owner of that mess... And that's mess. what I'm saying. It's a mess. It's a mess. You can't deal with this. Yes, you then t- pretty much just say just just cover your baby girl's eyes and tell them it's like you do not need to see this until it's cleaned up. I think you should be honest. I should be like, you know what? You should be like, I have my identity is wrapped in this team, and they've ruined me. And look at me as an example. I'm you a don't disaster. have to be. You don't have to be this. You don't have to be this. You don't. Have, now look, Arsenal. Like one of like. My family members in England, they sent my daughter an Arsenal bear. She's like, oh, it's the Arsenal on the bear's tummy. Like, because it's the bear has it right. on the tummy. Yeah, she sees yeah. it like, what? But again, even with sports, she does like the Nats, though. She's, a, she, she, she's in on she's in on that. Like, so again, I'm guilty of this as well. Well, let's 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 shift focus oh, on you that. Go talk let's talk about that. for Let's talk baseball for a second. Oh, God. There's this possibility that the Nats are up for sale. Yeah. All right. So what if, let's just say, let's just say hypothetically... Jared and his $2 billion. Oh, God. By the Nats. What are you, <laughs> after just trying to talk me out of abandoning the what the fucks, hey, look here, what are Jared. you going to do about look here, that? Jared, look here. If you spend the money. And hire Dusty Baker back. <laughs> I don't even know if you have to do that. If you, keep, if you spend the money, if you go deep into the luxury tax, all's forgiven. <laughs> <laughs> all's all forgiven in the baseball sense. Hey, hey, yo. Go I'm deep telling, into, I'm telling deep Adam into, Schiff on you. He is going to come in deep into the luxury tax, though. I'm Jamie Raskin. Deep. Jamie Raskin's listening. January 6th. He did it. <laughs> he he was, was part of it. Check his <laughs> text message. No, I'll check my text messages. I was, yeah, I was saying very nasty things. No, I was. I, yeah. <laughs> I was but, saying, but you're going to forgive Jared? Jared? Yes. Uh, that's they, what I'm saying. Well, they are. <laughs> they, but you, you would forgive Jared if, if he did well by the Nats? I mean, these owners, like, a lo- like again, we get our morality's wrapped up in the sports. If I started doing that, it would be bad. Right. The learners didn't treat okay, you well. Okay, so this is the same thing. This is what I'm telling you. But the, but it's the same thing. Yeah. All right? I, I'm, I'm wrapped up in a it's team a that's got a despot like, owner yeah. currently. Yes, he is. You're, you're wrapped up in a team that, by all measures, is mostly good ownership. You they know, don't spend money. Yeah. That's notable in the story, and I can tell you from personal experience. <laughs> exactly, I was about quote, to say. The, the, the quote from the story is, uh, the family gained a reputation within the organization yes. for questioning every expenditure from travel expenses for scouts to Thank stopwatches you. for minor league coaches to extra bats for players. The fact that we won the World Series is insane. Who won because, the World Series? Uh, he said it. You heard him say it. He said we. <laughs> yes, yes, I heard we. Right. I'm in a whole Nationals. I have a hat and I have a jersey on. I tell folks all the time, Arsenal and, Na- and the Nationals are the teams that still have me. My identity might be wrapped up into them a little too much. So but I know it's a problem. What's the difference? You don't know it's a problem. I know it's a problem. You know it's I admit it every week. I tell you you're a better person than me because you've escaped this one. No, but you're not. not. You're the I, same. I tell you that the same thing. I'm like, I'm not better than you. You're My emotions same. are so wrapped up in this. I'm wearing a full-on Nationals. I, I literally... I went to I was dropping my, I was dropping my kid off at school this week, okay? At elementary school. And another kid walks by and he's wearing an Ohio State sweatshirt. Oh my god. And I've... it crossed my mind. Should I punch the children? <laughs> Do you know the nasty thing? And I then do? I go, you know the nasty no. thing? The, the Don't I've punch the to, children. To, to people would, I've walked past people sometimes and it's, it's like only with Philly's baseball. jersey or whatever. Philly's Mets jerseys and I just say like some slick shit sometimes. Like, yeah. Mets are gonna met. Yeah. I'm just going to walk well, in. I, hey, look, I've worked with Steeler fans. It's so rubbed off on my wife. Look, even. She's now running off the road cars with Ohio bumper stickers. Yeah, like so, this is a I mean, real yeah. thing. I, Don't put this put on me like I'm the yes. bad one. I'm not putting I'm just saying sports and it doesn't matter. Just doesn't matter. That's bullshit, and you doesn't know it. Matter. <laughs> it's bullshit, and you know it. This it is, is coming is from fine. an Englishman, folks. So if, <laughs> so if the learners sell the team to 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 some Trump affiliated person, what's your move? I don't know. We look. I heard it because at least I, the, learners, from the learners, day and Orioles, the learners people. might be shitty and cheap and whatever, all this other kind of stuff. And yeah. Angelos and the Orioles are certainly known <laughs> for that too. But they both big Democratic donors and do the right thing when it comes to the voting. 
So I, don't what, like, I don't like the Orioles because they, they're messing with our TV money. And they've been messing with our TV money. I mean, our TV, TV money. money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not your TV money. You guys haven't won a World Series, and we keep mashing the float. We like, did. what are we talking about? Right? 1983. No, did Look here. I didn't Shut up. And I, and I heard that there was a lot of red hats at opening day Camden Yards. Just saying from my folks wasn't who were out there. Wasn't me. Now, there are a lot of red hats in they Nationals were orange. Park. It's, it's orange. But they did. Again, we booed, we booed that guy when he came. That's brother. true. We, 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 we wouldn't so go good. to Baltimore. Pelosi would have him killed. <laughs> she's still, she's still she lives in San Francisco <laughs> now. But she's, she's, she's okay. saying all Italians are yeah, probably... Yeah, yeah, Baltimore Italians. Italians. Look, it's it's not, not, <laughs> you're not a Baltimore Italian. Yeah, it's yeah, a different I'm not a kind. Baltimore Italian. There's really. different kinds of Italians. Exactly. They're like the Mike Tirico kind. <laughs> exactly. It's I'm more different flavor. Yeah. All right. So are they going to sell or not? <laughs> no. Um, no, no. First of all, it's a guess. They, 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 sh- they should sell the team. This is an ownership group that I don't really think has ever cared about winning, personally. They've Learners? been able to win. They've been able to win. I never thought that the ownership group has cared about winning. They've won, they, they won the draft lottery a couple times and the Dominican sweepstakes a couple times, right, with Robles and with Soto. With Ro- Robles yeah, and Soto. So, yeah, they've won the, yeah, right, so... I don't. I just don't know if they've always been committed to it, but they did win a World Series. We have deferred money trapped in someone who plays for the Mets now. That's true. And we have it in someone who's probably only going to play 20 games over the extension of his MVP. Yeah, but you don't have to pay on Bobby Bow Day. You know, and we still do. <laughs> the owner, the only owner I, I hope for. I think we're for, done with that now, maybe. The yeah. only owner I do hope for is a fan of the team. I know that sounds crazy because of what we just talked about with Snyder. Danny, yeah. But I want a fan who has deep pockets and knows how to back off. Yeah, and just not that meddlesome. Like, you send some tweets out every now and then. You might attack a player every now and then. It's not good either. But just that, like like Cohen. I, the like Mets, Bob Kraft. Bob Kraft I is mean, another one. you know, he's a fan. He loves his team. Just and he spend just the money. Yeah, let's, like, let's be in the lu- check, run the show. Because this is a team that should be in the luxury tax. Pay Juan Soto. It's probably not going to happen. It'll probably end up being a Yankee. Yep. It, just hope. Just, 100%. I mean, this is going to happen. That's fine. It's okay. I'm, I'm resigned to it now. And maybe that's when I quit the team. And we want to be, we, we were sort of talking about it before the show, but, like, we don't want Uncle Teddy, uh, Ted Leonsis, to, to take the team. Right? Yeah, I don't, I, I, even though he's demonstrated confidence in Stanley Cup winning, you know, for the He loves Caps, hockey. Does love hockey. He loves hockey. Successful. I, look, I don't, and I, I just, maybe this, I think this Nets team wins one more under, like, again, with Martinez at the helm, with this crazy bunch of folks, I have re- a big faith in Josiah Gray. I really want a black starting pitcher that just <laughs> dominates and wins 20 games. I mean, he's good. He, he, I think he's good. He could be good. I think he's good. We don't think, know yet. I don't know yet. He's super young. But we'll, we'll see. But we traded we'll Scherzer see. for him. So I, I mean, Davey knows what he's doing. He does. And that's why I, I don't know. The Brave series, I looked at that and I was like, okay. I mean, we got uh, you're in the like second game. Week but three of the yeah, season. Yeah, I can't get it. Yeah, yeah, we thought it was a loss. 120- 